Well, hello, friends. I'm so glad this thing works. Thomas, I would have been apologizing to you if it didn't. It may have fallen on the floor. Um, hey, guys, I'm a child of God, a person of worth who is powerless over drugs and alcohol and codependency. My name is Rochelle, and today I choose recovery. I just had to get that out because I was like holding my breath the whole entire time going, I hope this still works. I'm going to be in trouble. Okay, it is so good to be here with you all tonight choosing recovery. I remember um, just like it was yesterday, man, when um, choice was not an option for me. Uh, Twelve years ago today, I was sitting in the Lee County Jail because I could not stop drinking and drugging. And um, However, through the power of God today and the program of recovery, I do have a choice. I can choose recovery today. Now, with that being said, I have learned that there's a difference between choice and power. Because I'm still powerless over drugs and alcohol and codependency. However, through the power of God, I can make a choice today. And it took me lots of years to get into a place where I understood the difference between these. Like, for instance, I spent like seven years um, trying really hard not to pick up a drink or a drug. I'd go into all these recovery meetings. I'd go to like five or six a week. um, And I couldn't manage to get 30 days. And now, no matter how hard I tried. And then I came to a place where um, I realized, hey, I'm totally codependent. So I tried really hard to not act codependent, like really hard, read all the books, did, you know, all that kind of stuff. And you know what? No matter how hard I was trying not to be codependent, I was trying to control the world around me. Like, I just could not do it. Control is such a delusion, yet it seems as if kind of like it's the human nature for, for um, that to be the first instinct that we go to when situations arise. Take for instance, perfect for instance, this, this is how God works. So I'm writing this message, and as I'm writing this message, Kip, Kip is laughing because he knows this, this is, I can't make this up, guys. So I'm like, I'm going to work on this message. And, and so as I'm writing, I'm waiting Um, On our flight with our team that went to Mexico, we went to Juarez, Mexico. There were nine of us. We went and we brought recovery ministry over to them. And we're supposed to be on a flight home from um, El Paso. And then we're going to go to Dallas. And then we're going to make it to Fort Myers. And the plane has been delayed three times. Okay. And now we've been informed that when we finally make it to Dallas... We're not going to miss get our other plane, and we're going to be stuck there overnight before our flight flies out to Fort Myers. Now, mind you, this is Wednesday. We're supposed to be home Wednesday night because Friday morning, I have a very important flight to catch back to Texas for a one-day wedding. So here I am, and I, I have Thursday to get ready for this wedding. So it's Wednesday night, and now I'm stuck till Thursday night to turn around and get back on a plane flying out Texas. So can you imagine, this was not the situation I wanted to be in. So was stomping my feet, demanding another flight, crying, screaming inside, obsessing over the things that I had planned to do that I wasn't going to get to do. Was any of that going to help? Nope, I tried. It didn't get me very far. So it's in situations like that right there that I'm so glad that I have a program of recovery and biblical principles to get me through because I only spent a moment in insanity. And although it may not always be my first reaction, I know today now, I know today that when I live a life as a surrendered follower of Jesus and I accept my powerlessness, I can live at peace with any situations that are out of my control. And that's an important thing to know, isn't it? Who would have thought? Who would have thought that before recovery, that that powerlessness was going to be my key to freedom? I know I didn't. I mean, everything everything in the human nature fights against the idea of powerlessness. I tried to force solutions on problems all the time. The world tells us um, when things get tough, try harder, work smarter, figure it out, take control, don't admit your weakness, stay strong. Have you ever walked into a library and like seen like there's a huge selection on self-help books? Or you can Google. Hey, you can, you can pull out your phone right now. You can Google almost any problem you have and you'll find somebody will give you a solution to it, right? <laughs> no matter what you're facing, we can try to figure it out. But Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. 
Now, for those of us here in recovery, we can also relate to what it says in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. It says, some of us have tried to hold on to our old ideas and the result was no, until we let go, absolutely. There is no way for us to have new life as long as we're trying to control our ways. Many of us say we live in a place of powerlessness, but I question, do you really? When the teaching team met and we, um, we were wrestling around this idea of, of powerlessness, we agreed that in order to understand powerlessness, we needed to take a look at like surrender versus compliance. Because I think these are the two things we, we um, tend to get confused. Comply is kind of to go along with um, something temporarily due to the outside pressure. Um, until a better option comes available, of course. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll do this for now until I figure something else out. Versus surrender. Surrender is being at a state of knowing, no matter what, this is the way it has to be. Now this made perfect sense to me, because all those years while I was coming into the rooms, I was in that place of compliance. Compliance meaning I was looking for a way to make myself or the courts happy. I was looking for a way to escape temporarily the feelings of insanity that I was having. Meaning I was still trying to control my situation. I mean, the world was beating me into submission, so I was just looking for relief. The problem with that was, I was still always looking for a solution. I was browsing that recovery table, could you say, like picking and choosing, which part of the programs do I think that I need that are gonna fit, that are gonna help, that are gonna make this work? I don't have the solutions. If I did, I never would've had the problems in the first place, gonna get an amen with that. Right? We're all here because we're not all there. We didn't come in here because we knew how to do this life thing. Any of you ever tried to find the solutions and fix yourself? Oh, come on. Okay. I knew I wasn't alone. So I love this. I love this quote. It's from one of our pastors um, here, uh, Pastor Taylor um, Brown. He said this, and he says, the problem with me trying to fix things is I'm always trying to fix the wrong things. <laughs> That's my story. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. And it wasn't until I realized that there was no other way. I tried everything. I tried to fix the things all the time. And it was only when I realized I couldn't fix anything did I finally surrender. Surrender is knowing that you've tried everything. You give up control and you admit you're powerless. And guess what, friends? Powerless, it's not the end. I got a secret for you. It's the beginning. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. It's only when we live a life of surrender do we know our great need for God. And when we get to that place that we surrender to our powerlessness, over our tendencies to make the wrong choices, our powerlessness of our addictions, our powerlessness of our codependencies, our sexual uh, desires, that when we admit and surrender to our powerlessness, then, when we get there, then God's power can begin to work in us. Knowing our weakness, it's the beginning of freedom. The scripture behind this first step to the program of recovery is Romans 7, 18, and it says, and I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. Our recovery begins when we admit we can't make the right choices on our own. These words were spoken by the Apostle Paul. Now, now this is a man who spent his entire life killing Christians, and he literally had an eye-opening experience, and in an instant, he was transformed and became a follower of Christ. And he knew, he knew that no matter how hard he tried to make the right choices, he alone, he could not. He needed the power of God. And, and through knowing that, through knowing that God had that power, he became one of the most powerful men of time. And he wrote the majority of the New Testament of the Bible. The words that we stand on today. 
great things happen when we surrender to God. And, and matter of fact, um, I thought tonight that we would hear about a couple of those great things that, that have happened in people's lives when they surrendered to God. And so tonight, I asked a couple of friends to come up here and share in their admission of powerlessness for their experience today. So my first friend I'm inviting up is our friend Heidi. So everyone, welcome up, Heidi. All right, um, I'm a little nervous, so y'all work with me. Um, my name is Heidi, and I'm a child of God and a person of worth who struggles with drugs, alcohol, anger, and codependency, but tonight I choose recovery. <sighs> Hi, guys. And boy, oh boy, do I admit that I'm powerless over drugs and alcohol and that my life was unmanageable. When I got here July 22nd, 2022, which was a fantastic Friday night, I was an emotional whirlwind spinning out of control. You see, I didn't think I had a problem. I just needed a little help. So I got an invitation to join you guys for a free hot meal from a simple email I sent to Grace Church asking for free food. God sure knew what he was doing when my son heard free hamburgers. That night we attended Choose Recovery and I didn't think for one second my life was unmanageable or even out of control. I will tell you what I thought. I was a good mom because myself and my children were not homeless. We were living in our car which was totally normal and super nomadic. And hey, I made it back to CR for those free hot hamburgers. Little did I know Jesus was doing for me what I could not do for myself. Dinner was amazing, but I was feeling anxious. And being that I'm just a runner and a track star, I was ready to go. Tummies were full, and I wasn't really into that Jesus stuff. So, I was, so again, I was trying to get the kids to leave. But again, God has a sense of humor. And the kids heard the other kids talking about children's church. So, of course, I heard, Mommy, can we please stay? And I was like, great, thanks, God. <laughs> Reluctantly, we stayed, and man, oh, man, the plans for my life changed drastically. After the message, there was an altar call, and I realized how unmanageable my life was and how out of control it had become. I had given up a home on three acres, a relationship with my family, and ultimately the safety of my children. I honestly thought I was in control, but my life was controlled by addiction. I cried out to God. I'd been using drugs and alcohol as an illusion that my life was manageable and under control. And when that illusion was somehow broken, I used anger, control, anger and control to manipulate until I got what I wanted. That illusion was smashed that night, and I began to realize that I was a bro broken, lost, scared little girl. That night was the first time of many I began to fully surrender to God's will. And I would like to tell you I never struggled again but I'm human and that's definitely not the case. You can ask my TikTok channel. We have a front row seat on the Struggle Bus Express. My favorite verse is Romans 7, 18. For I know that nothing good lives in me within the flesh of fallen humanity. The longings to, to what is right are within me, but the willpower is not enough to accomplish it. Friday night, I cried out to God. I had no other choice. The pain was great enough and I began the journey of surrendering to him. My first task in surrendering was surrendering my children to my family and their father that following Monday night at CR. This was a rather difficult one. I had never been apart from them, but I had to trust God that he would protect them and keep them safe as he loves them so much more. This is still a daily, this is still a daily thing. While I have explained to my kids I'm in mommy school, training to become a healthier mom that God intended me to be. Surrendering has given me a freedom and joy when I cannot be there for my children and they are struggling with their emotions. I have to immediately give it to God. On this journey, I lost my mom. I never thought I would be able to live without her. When I got the call that Thursday morning, I immediately wanted to question God and ask why. But my sponsor reminded me that his ways are better and to trust the process. Grief is not easy and I can easily get spun up and out of control. But the tool of surrendering and allowing the Holy Spirit to guide my emotions and thoughts has been an amazing experience and brought great joy to my sorrows. I can honestly say it is well with my soul. Recently, before I made a year sober, I lost my job. And boy, oh boy, did this cause Heidi the hot mess to spin like a top. Every fear and anxiety I had surfaced, every fear and anxiety I had surfaced and allowed me to see the areas in my life I had not yet surrendered to God. My recovery tribe came beside me and helped me where I thought I was a failure and complete disaster. They reminded me I was a child of God and a person of worth. When I got, a, 
when I finally surrendered to God and let go of the fears and worries, my sponsor sent me a text asking if I still needed a job. I immediately went in a pride. And I'd love to tell you that this is the best part of the story where this is my forever job, but it's not. You see, God again had other plans. It taught me some lessons, and a cool fun fact is I got fired this past Monday <laughs> from this job. <laughs> the most amazing part is what God did when I trusted him. When they said, hey, Heidi, come into the office, close the door, I immediately had a choice to choose fear and become defensive or choose faith. I chose faith. And when she said, Heidi, you're not a good fit, after training the two new girls, I said, okay, have the best day ever. And that's, and that's God, not Heidi. Yet hurt, but I trust God. And Tuesday I had an interview and a job at Panera. You see there's a song, Who Am I, by Need to Breathe, and it says, White Lies and Desperation, Hard Times and Conversation. No one should ever love me like you do. Jesus loves me. My life is not always rainbows and butterflies, but I have a joy within me. I've learned that if I'm spun up, normally I'm outside of my hula hoop, and my flamingos are in somebody else's trailer park. And that means I have to clean house, trust God, and love others. Thank you. That was so amazing. Now we have another friend that's coming out, Gwen. Everyone welcome up, Gwen. She's going to share her experience. Good evening, everyone. My name is Gwen, and I struggle from codependency. <laughs> How many of you feel powerless? Let's see a raise of hands. All right. Well, I had to look up the dictionary because I'm a word freak. I like to look up things. And I saw that it was, means helpless and unable to control or influence events. And some of us in this room tonight just raised our hands because we know we're powerless. Some of us in this room are not sure yet if we're powerless. But let me tell you something. The first step was very hard for me because I thought I had all the power. I thought that I had it all together and I controlled everything. See, I began working these steps last year and I went through it and I kind of like surface, you know, did the surface steps. But this year in April, I decided to get serious and I started Hunger for Healing. And as I started working the steps on that first step, I started reading, and I started realizing I really didn't understand what powerless. You know, I, I was like, oh, okay. I, I already gave it to him. But I really didn't. And what I realized was as I was working on these steps in April, my dad happened to be down here. Now, for some of you that don't understand my dad's situation, I actually hated my dad. Um, he was never around. Him and my mom would fight. And of course, uh, I had to, uh, I was always out there and I was doing stuff. I was very busy. And my dad never came and watched me play ball. He never saw me twirl my baton. And then it happened in 12th grade, my dad actually told a friend something. And my friend said, you know what? Do you know your dad? said you were going to be a loser, that you weren't going to amount to anything, and that you were lazy. I thought, my dad said that about me? Doesn't he see that I have over a thousand trophies? Doesn't he see that I am playing ball and my name's out there? When he said that, something happened inside me. I made a vow inside that I... I'll show him I'm going to be somebody, and I'm never going to ask you for help. And what I didn't realize is that vow that I made that night actually affected how I worked the program. See, I had a hard time trusting God as my father. Going back to this day, April um, 2023, my dad and I were sitting out on the lanai. And I've been working that first step. And I told Dad, I said, Dad, I have to go uh, to an awards banquet. I'm getting an award for sales. Now, typically, my dad would say over the phone, he would say, hmm, I bet you owe the IRS some money. <laughs> well, it wasn't funny to me. 
But this time he said something different in April. He said, I'm proud of you. You are doing great. Can I come to this dinner and watch? I'm going to tell you something. That night, something broke. I began to cry because I realized that God was doing something in me. I finally realized that all this performance, all this time that I was out there trying to be somebody and to perform was based on my dad's reaction. When he said to me that I am worthy, I finally felt it. I felt like I belonged. I wanted to hear that since I've been six years old. And finally, 50 years later, I'm hearing this. That started me helping get through that first step. Feeling like I'm not, I am powerless. I finally gave it up. And that third step, control, oh yeah, now I'm finally giving that to God. I'm finally giving it to him. Because I realized I needed to do this. I needed to make these changes in my life. And all this healing, all this time doing this, I'm finally not performing anymore. I'm finally enjoying my life. In fact, God had me, as I was writing this, he had me look up in my journal. And I journal all the time. I'm always wanting to know, God, teach me. What can I do? And he had me read back. And I was reading from April until now. And what I realized was I started making some changes. I actually started realizing, hey, you know what? I work seven days a week. I'm tired of working. You know what? I don't need to perform anymore. I don't need to be the best. I don't need to sell 70 properties. I don't need to do this anymore to feel like I am loved because my dad said I am. I actually took up the hobby of sewing, and I'm enjoying it, building, um, making quilts and stuff. I actually went away for the weekend when Kip was in uh, Mexico. I went and saw my daughter in Atlanta, and we had a great time. I actually put down my phone. I didn't even talk to anyone. I finally realized I gave up that power, that control. I enjoyed life, and it was for the first time that I actually laughed and had fun. See, as I'm working these steps, I realize that I hold on to a lot. I don't need to perform now. God is changing me from the inside out. And let me tell you, if there's anything I can share tonight with you, start working this program because you'll start seeing those changes. And you'll start having that freedom. I want to thank you so much, ladies, for sharing um, with us tonight. You know, our, our stories, they may be different. However, our victory, our victory is the same. Because our victory is in Jesus. Our victory is in freedom. Because who the sun sets free is free indeed. And when we admit our powerlessness, God will move those mountains. Whatever it is that you're struggling with right now, God is the one who moves the mountains. Now, there are things that we all still struggle with today. And, and maybe you're like myself, who, who might say to God over and over, like, God, why am I still struggling with this? Like, why? Why is it that I keep falling into my old ways of thinking? And why is it that I, I still allow the enemy space in my head? Like, he don't pay rent there. Like, he does not pay rent, but yet he controls half my thoughts. Like, really? You're not alone. You're not alone if you have these struggles. Like the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous says, many of us have had moral and psychological convictions to glory, but we could not live up to them, even though we would have liked to. Neither could we reduce our self-centeredness much by wishing or trying it on our own power. We had to have God's help. 
This is why I believe that we continue to be a work in progress. We will always need to seek God for our powerlessness. I will never again regain the power. You know why? Because if I didn't, I wouldn't need God. As I spoke to you earlier, I, I shared that scripture that when we're weak, he is strong. Well, there's some context that the Apostle Paul um, wrote in, uh, in this. And so here it is. It says, so to keep me from becoming conceited because of my surpassing greatness of revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I pleaded to the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all more gladly of my weakness, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. We're going to invite the band to come back up here tonight. And I encourage you to, I encourage you to think about this. I encourage you to think about your weakness, where it is that you're struggling. What are you struggling to accept your powerlessness with today? You were all handed a yellow piece of paper when you came in, and there's pens in the seat backs, and if you don't have one, maybe ask a neighbor for one, because they're back there somewhere. What is your thing that you're struggling with? What is it that God's wanting to heal in your life, but you're struggling to give control over? I encourage you to write that down. Because tonight we're going to open the altar, and we're going to have a, a, a last song, as we always do. And I, I want to give you an opportunity to come to, that, to the altar tonight and surrender all that you're trying to control. Because it's in our surrender. It's in our complete surrender. It's in that place when we come to Jesus and we say, God, there's so much going on. And there's these things that I continue to struggle with that continue to come up over and over and I need your help with. It's in that place of complete surrender of our powerlessness over this that God's strength can come in and give us the strength and the courage to walk through anything that we may be facing. Because his power is made great in our weakness. But we gotta come to him with that weakness. We gotta come to him with our surrender. Let's stand for prayer. Lord, we come to you right now. You know our heart. You know what lies in there that we struggle to give over control to you because, Lord, we just don't know if your ways are going to be what our ways are. And we just want to hold on to our own ways. So, Lord, we come to you tonight and we ask that you pry our hands open, that you help us to release control of what it is that we're trying to hold on to. And you give us the strength to surrender it to you, Lord. Father, for when it's you working through us, Lord, you transform our minds. You transform our thinking, Lord Jesus. And we want your will to be done because we know that your plans are far greater than our plans could ever have been. So, Lord, we come here tonight and we surrender our plans to you. We lay them down. And we ask that you fill us with your Holy Spirit to give us the courage to walk out of here with the confidence, hope, and knowing that you are with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The altar is open. If you'd like someone to pray with you, please raise a hand.